What's up guys, Kellen back with another episode of Inside Out Precision and today we're going to talk arrows. So specifically three things, uh, what exactly the spine of an arrow is, what that's referring to and how it affects the, the tune of your bow, uh, arrow diameter and then overall weight of your arrow. So there's a lot of, lot of talk around all these different things. So today I'm going to break kind of, kind of break down and demystify what, what these different things do for you. So. Um, here at the shop, we sell mostly Easton, a little bit of gold tip as well. Uh, Easton's been in the game for I don't even know how many years, but a long, long time. And they're kind of the gold standard. There's a lot of good arrows that are made out there, but we've always had really good luck with Easton. And they provide a very large selection for to meet the needs of whatever it may be that you're looking for. So uh, to jump right into things, starting with their FMJ series. So FMJ stands for Full Metal Jacket. And what that's referring to is that it is a carbon carbon inner core with a, an aluminum casing around it. And uh, Easton is the only company out there that knows how to do this. They're very hush-hush about this technology and it's a really, really cool arrow. So um, starting with the six millimeter, so this is a six millimeter in diameter. Uh, this is the full metal jacket. So again, carbon, carbon core, um, aluminum outside. And what the full metal jacket gives you um, over a carbon is that a this same arrow in all carbon would probably be anywhere from 30 to 40 grains less in the exact same spine and length. So it allows you to get a heavier overall weight of your arrow, which for hunting can be pretty important. And I should preface that these are all hunting shafts for the most part. I'm not doing any target shafts today. But for a hunting shaft, you want you want some good kinetic energy and weight is what's gonna give you that. Now, obviously, you know, you can you can go overboard with it. Um, kinetic energy is on a bell curve. So if you have too much speed and not enough weight, you're gonna lose kinetic energy. If you have too much uh, weight and not enough speed, you're gonna lose kinetic energy. But, you know, generally FMJs, um, this is, again, this is the six millimeter. And they're gonna be anywhere in that, depending on your spine and length, um, for most, adult men shooters, you know, shooting a 400 to a 300, somewhere in there, you're going to be anywhere from, you know, 440 to 510, um, depending on the, whether it's a, you know, 400, uh, 340 or 300. And this particular shaft actually comes in a little bit different spines. Uh, this comes in a 490, I believe, a little cheat sheet here. Uh, 470, 390, and, and 320. So a little bit different. Most are like 500, 400, 340, 300, and then maybe a, a 260. Um, so they've got a few different spine options. I actually shot this arrow last year. Really, really liked it. The one downside to FMJs is that because they have the aluminum casing there, they are subject to getting pretty beat up if you're shooting groups, especially if you're shooting groups at like 20 yards. Um, you know, you've got, for the most part, you've got steel points on your arrows and aluminum casing steel is much harder than aluminum so when it hits the back of this shaft or if it cross shafts it this is going to absorb the arrow rather than deflecting it off like an all carbon shaft will um, so they're not they're not the most indestructible shaft i will say that but they are perfectly straight um, and just a really nice shooting arrow another bonus is they pull out of the targets really easy uh, the next arrow I've got here, this is they make a five millimeter FMJ, so it's a little smaller diameter, and a smaller diameter is going to allow basically better penetration and less wind drift. So this is the five millimeter. It still accepts a standard broadhead size, but they have what's called the hit insert, where the insert is actually recessed down in the tip a ways to about right there before your threads start catching. But what I like about that is that after I cut my arrows and I square up all the ends, when I when I plunge the, the insert down into the shaft here, there's no room for it to get offset in there. There's no play in there. And so all your broadheads, if they're manufactured well, will spin tune very, very well on these. There's no chance that like on a, on a standard out or insert, like one that would go on the six millimeter or on like a gold tip. Um, you know, if there's a little bit of play there and that insert sets just a quarter or a half degree one way or the other, you're going to get a little bit of wobble in your broadhead and it just makes a little more of a headache when you're trying to tune up your broadheads. So I really like that hit insert. Um, you know, this is a 300. This one is 12 grains an inch. So you're going to get a lot of weight in just the shaft. Uh, all these Eastons also come with a brass insert, which will go between a 50 and a 75 grain brass insert. 
So if you want to run more point weight, you can do that. You just want to make sure you don't soften up your spine too much when you do. And I'll go over that in a minute here. Um, the next FMJ series they have, this is the Deep Six. So this is the, the FMJ injection. This is a really, really popular arrow. Four millimeters. So this is very resemblant of a like an outdoor target shaft, but they've cased, it's, instead of being aluminum on the inside and carbon on the outside, this is again, carbon on the inside and aluminum on the outside. So even though this is a small diameter shaft, uh, this is a 330 and it's still coming in at 11 grains per inch. So in these, again, they have a little bit different spine chart. Um, they're gonna go from uh, 460, 400, 330, and 280. So then I'll get into, you know, how to choose your spine here in a second, like I said, but really cool arrow. They do take a little different insert, so it's still the hit insert that goes down into it, um, but they require deep six broadheads, which is just the thread basically. So it's gonna be a little slightly smaller ferrule and a slightly smaller thread. So if you have, you know, 12 broadheads that are standard size and you buy these, they will not screw into these unless you go with uh, this, which is kind of an insert outsert actually. Focus up there, there we go. So this is a 55 grain titanium insert and it it inserts into the arrow about this far. Again, you want to square up, square up the end of your arrows real well. But this will allow A, more front of center and then it really toughens up the front of this arrow. The only complaint that I've had and heard guys say about this is sometimes they'll get the, the broadhead will break off right, right where the insert is. The tip of the arrow will break off if they hit something real hard. Um, and that's just because you know, it is a smaller diameter shaft. The walls are not as thick. There's just less material there uh, for strength. But basically a really high end target shaft that they kind of reverse engineered and made into a hunting shaft. So you're gonna get less drag. You know, your broadhead is gonna make a bigger hole than the arrow. So you're gonna get very minimal drag with this. It's heavy. It's gonna cut through wind really well. So a really cool arrow. Um, lots of guys are shooting these and having really good luck with them. Just a really well made arrow. So. The next one kind of going down the Easton lineup in the injection series. So this is the same diameter, but it's an all carbon arrow. So this is the carbon injection made by Easton. Um, this is, so to give you an idea, so this is a 330 in the all carbon, and this one is 10.1 grains per inch, whereas the 330 in the FMJ is 11 grains an inch. So you're gonna gain over the length of an arrow anywhere from you know 26 to 30 grains probably just in the shaft itself. So that's what's cool about the FMJ is even though it's the same spine as this, the overall weight is, is higher. So you're able to maintain the proper spine for your bow, but still get your overall weight up with the FMJ. But the all carbon is probably our more popular shaft strictly because of its uh, durability. So, you know, when you're shooting groups and you're smacking arrows together, you know, A, these are smaller, so there's less chance you're gonna hit them. And B, it's just a, it's a thick walled arrow because it's smaller diameter, they have to make the wall a little bit thicker to get that spine. So they stand up to abuse pretty well. Um, you know, you're not gonna ding them if you cross shaft them, unless you just absolutely pin one, you get really bad bail kick and you just pin one with another uh, field point. You're not gonna get any, any damage there. Um, you pretty much have to dead center that knock to, to break the back of these. They're a really tough arrow. Um, I, I've tuned up a ton of bows with these. They're all incredibly straight. You know, these are all plus or minus, uh, I believe a thousandth. I think they say three thousandths, but most of everyone that we have, have put on the arrow straightener moves one less than one one thousandth of an inch on this arrow straightener. So an incredibly straight, awesome arrow. Um, again, resembling of kind of an outdoor tournament style arrow, but beefed up for hunting. So really cool option from them. And then our most popular arrow by far, this is gonna be your Axis. So these are gonna come anywhere from a 600 spine all the way up to a 260 spine. So, you know, if you're only a, shooting 24 inches and 45 pounds, you can shoot one of those, the, the 600 spine and still get a really high end hunting arrow. Um, and then if you're shooting, you know, 32 inches at 70 or 80 pounds, you can shoot the 260 and you're still gonna get a really good spine. So this is five millimeters as well. Um, you know, the, the five millimeter FMJ and the five millimeter axis are actually, they're the same spines and everything. But again, the, the FMJ um, is going to be a grain to a grain and a half heavier depending on the spine throughout per inch. So you're going to get, again, a lot more weight in the overall length of the shaft. These are both the match grade, which is this little logo you're seeing right here. Try and get that, that, that to focus. 
come on now. There we go. So that match grade, what that's referring to is that every dozen you get is gonna be matched to within, they're all gonna be plus or minus a grain of each other and one one thousandth of an inch. So you know that every arrow in your dozen is going to be perfect. So for uh, an all carbon arrow, Axis is probably one of the heavier ones on the market, just in the shaft itself. Again, it takes the hit insert and because it's a little smaller diameter, they've got a little bit thicker wall, which I think is where they get that weight from. So a really tough overall hunting arrow. Um, you know, I when people talk about toughness of arrows, they always talk about, you know, the bend test. Like Gold Tip always puts their arrow in this hydraulic press and shows you how much further it bends than other arrows, but that's not how arrows break. I've never taken an arrow and, and snapping it like this. Where arrows break is, you know, if they get hit in the back with another arrow, or if they go into an animal and you know, get between the shoulders and that animal drives back, it snaps that shaft off. So, and it, I don't care what arrow you have, if you got an elk shoulder blade and your broadhead's pinned in the other shoulder, it's going to snap your arrow when it, when it breaks. So when I'm talking about a toughness of an arrow, I'm looking for, you know, can they take abuse when I'm shooting them? If I go through, let's say, a 3D target and I, you know, hit into a stump, am I going to mushroom and tip out or is it going to take a little, you know, take some abuse? And axes seem to be a really tough arrow. Um, they make these little footer things you can get on them too if you're worried about the, the point not being as as tip or as or tough as you want, but I've never really seen the need for them. These take a lot of abuse, by far our best selling shaft. Um, and again, they come from a 600 all the way up to a 260 spine, so full range of spine there. Uh, the other, the Easton has one more shaft that we sell a lot of, this is the Bloodline. So this is gonna come in a, a 480, a 400, a 330, and a 240. So again, a little bit different spine range there. Um, it's your standard diameter shaft, so I think that's like 6.2 millimeter. Um, this might be right at six actually. I think they're 6.2 though. And they are a lot lighter than another arrow. So this is a 330, but it's only coming in at, where's the grains per inch here? 8.7 grains per inch. So you're gonna be significantly lighter than like a 340 in an axis with a 330 in this. Uh, where that can come in handy is for some people who are shooting lower poundage. Um, you know, they want a little more just overall speed. Uh, you know, you can still get a good spined arrow and get a little more speed with this. So popular arrow, definitely not our best seller, um, but we do sell quite a few of them. Really good arrow too for like 3D and stuff. They're not super expensive. You know, you're just over $100 a dozen for these. Um, so they don't hurt quite as bad when you miss and bury one in a tree or hit a rock or something. Um, and they're light enough to where you're gonna get some good speed out of them. So if you misjudge that yardage a little bit, you're still gonna catch whatever the ring is that you're aiming at. So cool arrow from them. Um, we do sell gold tips. Gold tip has a large array of shafts. We pretty much just stick with the Hunter series unless somebody special orders them they have kind of like easton small diameter in the the kinetic series um and then some some really light ones kind of like the bloodline called the velocity series which we have a few of but for the most part we carry the hunter series so you've got the the hunters the xts and then the the pro hunters and basically each step up is going to get you a little more straightness and a little better weight tolerance so the hunters are plus or minus six thou xts are three thou and the uh, pros are going to be plus or minus one thousandth straightness. So tough shaft, not bad weight overall. Gold tip's been around for a really long time. Um, just a solid arrow. Again, you know, we sell a lot of these for guys on their first time setup where they know they're going to be missing a little bit. Each, I think one one of these shafts is like seven dollars, all cut and inserted and out the door. So if you do break them, it doesn't hurt quite as bad as like an FMJ injection where each shaft is coming in about. You know, by the time it's finished, around 15 bucks. So, popular arrows there. Um, so now that you know, I've kind of got over some of the arrows, let's get into what the spine actually means. So, the spine of an arrow is, the, the number refers to the deflection off of zero that that arrow will flex when it's cut at 28 inches and shot out of a 70 pound bow. So for example, a 500 spine arrow is flexing 0 .500 inches at that at those uh, measurements. A 300 spine arrow is flexing 0 0.300 inches. Uh, a 340 is 0 .0, or 0 0.340 inches off of that zero plane when it's shot. So 
basically the the more poundage and draw length you have the the higher the spine or the stiffer the spine that you need it's actually a lower spine it's kind of like a fish hook you know number two is a lot bigger than a number 12 it's the same in arrows and i see that mistake a lot guys come in and they're you know they're, they're shooting like a oh for example an rx1 turbo and they they were just a little confused when they were buying their arrows and they bought 500s thinking that, that was going to be a heavy arrow and would be good for a bow that's got a lot of you know pretty stiff draw and a lot of speed in it when in reality that arrow is way too light and you know their bow sounds like a cannon when it goes off because there's just no weight to that arrow and you know puts a lot of stress on everything puts a lot of stress on your strings your cams your limbs so the lower the spine the stiffer and heavier the arrow will be um, generally speaking 340 is probably the most common spine that we sell it'll work pretty much you know 70 pounds let's say it'll work for pretty much anybody who's you know 27 and a half to 29 ish in there and every manufacturer has spine charts that'll tell you I generally find that they seem to be a little bit on the weak side um, you know you can I will say an arrow that's a little too stiff seems to be a little more forgiving than an arrow that's that's too weak especially with a broadhead and that's because an arrow that's too weak when it comes out it's gonna flex like this and if you're shooting a fixed blade broadhead that flexion in the tip of the arrow like that or the movement of the tip of the arrow is going to want to plane that broadhead one way or the other where if it comes out and it's a little has less movement like that the chances of it planing one way or the other are a little bit less um, but ideally you want to get your spine down to where it's perfect for your bow and the length of the arrow so like i said earlier that measurement is done at 28 inches so if i cut my arrow if i cut a 400 at 26 and a half inches it'll be a, a little bit stiffer than a true 400 spine. Conversely, if I cut it at 29 inches, it's gonna be a lot weaker than a, a normal 400 spine. Another way you can soften or stiffen the spine of your arrow is with uh, weight in the front end. Just imagine if you had a wood dowel and you had a penny taped to the end of it, it'd still be pretty stiff. Now tape a golf ball to the end of it, it's gonna have a lot more flex and sway in it, right? So that's kind of the idea behind uh, point weight in your arrows. So a lot of times guys will, you know, not realizing that they'll throw 50 grains of brass in a 340 that they're shooting at 70 pounds and 29 inches. And all of a sudden their groups are opening up. Um, their tune through paper seems to change and they can't figure out what's going on. And it's because they were probably kind of right on the verge of being too weak anyway. And then when they threw that extra weight in the point, it softened up their spine too much and their arrow never recovers out of the bow. Because if you watch, high speed film when an arrow actually takes off, it's not just perfectly straight. That arrow flexes and oscillates like this when it comes out. So the back of the arrow would look, you know, it's gonna flex a little bit like that. And so if it flexes too much, that oscillation just gets bigger and bigger and then you get that kind of tailspin effect and it just never recovers. So you get really erratic flight out of it. Conversely, if your arrow is way too stiff, like if I was shooting a 300 cut at 26 inches and pulling 50 pounds, it's, there's no forgiveness in that shaft. So if it gets going one way, there's nothing that's going to bring it back into alignment. It's just going to keep pushing that way. It'd be like trying to shoot a pencil with fletchings on it. You know, there's just, there's no direction to it. So spine is something you need to play around with. Like I said, most manufacturers are going to have a spine chart that'll at least set you in the right direction. If you want to load up the point weight a lot more, which is a really popular trend these days, you know, guys are trying to get that FOC up. You know, some guys are going as much as like 40%, which, you know, debatable um, on how accurate that is. Most target stuff, which is where all the accuracy in archery comes from, most guys are going to try and be between 11 and 16%. So um, and there's a bunch of calculators online to see how to do your, your FOC. Um, but I've always found anything pretty much from like 10 to 15 flies great. Um, but if you're loading up a bunch of weight in, in the point of your arrow, you may want to look at one of those spine charts and make sure that you're not already right at kind of the back end or the top end of your spine. Because if you're almost, if you're kind of right on that verge of, let's say, going between a 340 and a 300, and then you put another 50 grains up front, it's going to take you out of that 340 spine. And you need to go to a 300. Then you can load up the point weight. You are going to increase the overall weight of your arrow, but it's going to fly a lot better. So um, that's kind of the, the, the deal with spine. There's a lot, a lot of theories around, you know, 
what's best in terms of bow to bow. Some bows, we tune a lot of bows here. Some bows do like a weaker spined arrow for some reason. Uh, some bows like a really stiff arrow for some reason. So kind of play around with it, you know, find that best forgiveness. Just like a bow can be tuned to be forgiving, arrows can be tuned to be forgiving as well. So, so that spine, um, the overall arrow weight is really gonna be dependent on what you wanna be doing. So for a hunting arrow, I find for most adult males, an arrow that's gonna be between, you know, 425 and 500 seems to be a really good combination. Now, obviously if you're, you know, if you're shooting a shorter draw length, let's say your draw length is only 26, 27 inches and you're only pulling 60 pounds, you don't wanna shoot a 500 grain arrow because you're gonna to have too much weight and not enough speed, so you're gonna lose kinetic energy and penetration. Conversely, if I'm shooting, if I have 30 inches and I'm shooting a, you know, 70 pounds and I'm shooting an arrow that's 400 grains, sure, it's gonna come out of the bow really fast, but it's like throwing a ping pong ball at somebody. It's gonna come out of your hand really fast, but it's not gonna hurt when it hits. Whereas maybe I slow down the overall speed, shoot an arrow that's in the, you know, 450 to 480 range, it's gonna slow the speed down, but it's actually gonna carry the speed better down range and it's gonna hit a heck of a lot harder. It's like the difference between getting hit again with a ping pong ball and a baseball. So for hunting, generally speaking, um, you know, a, a good arrow weight for most guys is gonna be somewhere in that 425, 430, up to that 500. Um, if you're going for a really big, big game, you know, there's special shafts. We built some the other day for guys going on a muskox hunt and they were 780 grains. But he's only shooting 20 yards. He needs as much penetration as he can get. He's pulling 84 pounds. So he's got the horsepower to drive that arrow through the animal. Um, but if you're, if you have a shorter draw length, let's say, you know, maybe you're a woman or a kid who's shooting, let's say you're 25 inches and pulling 55 pounds, then you're probably going to want to be somewhere in the 380 to 420 range because you want to keep that speed up a little bit again to keep you on the top of the bell curve of kinetic energy. Uh, so play around with it. You know, you'll, it's hard with hunting arrows because it's not like you're shooting animals every single day, getting to test different arrows on them, but talk to your local pro shop. They'll usually have pretty good advice on what's going to work for you. Um, so that's weight and spine diameter. I kind of went over it earlier, but basically the idea with a smaller diameter shaft is outdoor, you're going to get less wind drift and you're, you are going to have less surface area causing less drag when it's going through an animal. So the idea is that the, the broadhead makes a hole that is bigger than the shaft. So there's very little resistance on the shaft itself when it's sliding through an animal. So, um, you know, I, I really like the five millimeter. I shot the six millimeters last year. They were great. I actually, unfortunately didn't shoot a bull with one so I was really hoping I would but hopefully this year I'll have <laughs> I'll have the chance to uh, but just shooting 3d targets and stuff they hit hard you know I can tell when the arrow hits they, they penetrate really well and just shot great out of my bow so I hope that breaks down arrows a little bit for you um, all the shafts I showed today we obviously sell here at the shop so you can call us we can build them and order them uh, or you can order them and we can build them and send them to you or come by and we can kind of play around with stuff and figure out what's going to be the best shaft for you. So thanks for listening. Uh, hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. And remember, precision is a decision.